Hey folks, today we're going to talk about the Caldwell Rock BR or the Caldwell Rock Benchrest. Uh, I got this about a year ago. Uh, I want to touch on why I got it, uh, how it worked for me, how it does still work for me, uh, how to use it, uh, my thoughts on it, the pros and the cons, and spoiler alert from the title, um, any modifications I may have made to it to turn it into the Frankenstein rest. So, real quick before we dive into the meat of today's video, let's talk about privacy. Have you ever Googled yourself? It'll probably scare you. And that's only a fraction of what's out there on the dark web and data broker sites. Data brokers sell your information to spammers and scammers and anybody else that might want to target you. Your full name, email address, home address, health records, social security number, relatives, maybe even your bank account and credit card account. It's all out there. That's why I've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers have been selling my information and automatically sends opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information has not only helped to reduce the amount of spam that I get, it also helps protect me from hackers who could use this information to access my social media accounts, bank accounts, and other sensitive information. AT&T recently revealed that over 73 million customers, both former and current, had their records released on the dark web. They recommended that those affected use strong passwords, monitor account activity, and consider credit freezes or fraud alerts from credit bureaus. Well, Aura does all of that for me, and I don't have to download a bunch of different apps just because one company couldn't keep my data secure. If my information was compromised in the AT&T data breach, I wouldn't worry because Aura is always on and always doing the hard work of protecting me and my family and our data. I value my privacy and I know you value yours. You can get a two week free trial by using the special link aura.com slash crusty old marine. I'll add that link down here in the video. So go get your two week free trial. So let's talk about how I wound up with the uh, Caldwell Rock BR in the first place. Um, like I said, I got it about a year ago, and at the time, uh, I was shooting F-Open with the uh, Ruger Precision Rifle and 6.5 Creedmoor. I'm still shooting with that, although I've got a proper rifle being built in uh, 7 PRCW. But I was shooting the uh, Ruger with an Accutac bipod. The Accutac bipod was not helping my scores at all. I knew that I had to go to a proper front rest and what I wanted to get was a 7 Neo X or a 7 Mini X. And any folks out there that are familiar with the 7 Rest, you know how good they are, but you know, you're gonna have to wait a long time for one. You're gonna be on a waiting list for six to 15 months to get one. Anyway, I got that order, got it in, but I got this in the meantime. Um, it was kind of down to this uh, Caldwell Rock BR and the Caldwell uh, FCU fire control unit. The fire control unit's really similar to this, except it's got a lever and a handle on the back of it so you can manipulate it uh, a lot like a coaxial unit. Uh, I read a lot of reviews on that and uh, people were saying, well, you know, it's not very smooth in the movement and, you know, it's uh, not real precise. I'm like, well, it had, it's got to be better than the uh, bipod, right? But I thought, why waste my money on that when I know I'm going to get a coaxial type unit in the SEB at some point, um, you know, this could do in the interim. I did a little more research on some other things that were available, and uh, I'm going to show you what I ultimately wound up with in what I call my Frankenstein rest. But let's cover this thing. And it's called, well, Rock BR. You know, it's a bench rest. It's not bad. I mean, everybody knows... Uh, you know, the quality of Caldwell stuff. Some of their stuff is pretty good. Some of their stuff is garbage. I would rate this as one of their better pieces of equipment. Um, first thing I noticed when I got it and knew that I was going to get rid of was uh, this bag for the front rest. Yeah, let me undo that a little bit. This thing, as you can see right there, it's a quality Chinese product, uh, and I'm sure this is Chinese too, but this uh, little rest, right, this little, this little front bag right here is 
is not that great. Um, I'm not sure what it's filled with. It's 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 probably like a uh, it's probably like the high score plastic fill. It's not real solid, and it'll fit depending on how much uh, fill you have in it. It'll fit a rifle from about an inch and a half to about, uh, I think I measured about two and a quarter, two and a half inches, where you can get a good flat rider on it. Um, while we're talking about that, let's see if I can show you this. They've got a mounting system in here for this bag. You can see it's got Velcro loops under it. And you lift these plates up and secure these loops under here and then tighten the plate back down. And that makes this bag ride really, really good in the uh, top portion of the rest. It uh, it doesn't move around. It's it's very solid. I'll, I'll give them kudos on that part of, of the design. Um, while we're in that area, you can see that it, it does have a bubble level, which if you watch some of my other videos with my 6.5 Creedmoor, you know, I've got a front bag rider on it, and I've got to have my rest out of level. I, I know folks look at me on the line, they're like, does he have a clue what he's doing? It's like, his rifle ain't level because my rest is, instead of sitting like, you know, looking level like that, my rest is sitting like that. And it's not due to the front rest on my rifle. It's due to the front shroud on that Ruger not being indexed quite properly. So the slots where you mount anything on it, they're, they're off kilter just a little bit. And I've got a, a piece of pick rail mounted on that. And then the front rider is mounted to the pick rail. Um, and it puts it at a little bit of a, of a camp. So I have to level it up and it makes my rest look something like that. Anyway, we're talking about, uh, the portion that holds the front bag. One, one area that I think Caldwell was kind of chintzy in, you know, it does have adjustable pieces right here where you can, uh, put some pressure on the bag but I don't like their design in it and the, the, it's just, it's hinged right here at the bottom and the whole piece doesn't slide in and out. It just cants in from the top. So it just squeezes your bag in from the top. Um, I don't think that, I think that's kind of a cheap way of doing it and it's not the most efficient. I think you really want your, your bag squeezers to go in like that together. The first modification I did to it was that protector front bag rest. Uh, I never used this thing. Uh, I knew it was kind of garbage from the get-go. It doesn't fit my rifle. Uh, my rifle has a three-inch uh, bag rider on it, and you're not going to get a three-inch to go flat on that thing. So, I mean, right when I ordered that, I called protector and had them make me this uh, front bag rider, and that is filled with heavy sand. It's three-inch. It is wonderful. You can probably see here, we were talking about these uh, hold downs for the straps on the uh, Caldwell bag. This protector front bag has little flaps that you can do the same thing with, but you'll notice that they don't really line up with these uh, little hold downs in the Caldwell. Um, it was a minor thing. Uh, I knew I was not gonna stay with this anyway for very long. Like I said, I never shot it and uh, but that was a much better bag. So if you guys are going to get one of these and use it as built, uh, one of the first things I would suggest is getting you a good front bag rider from a protector or another company. I really like protector. They're, they've got great stuff. So this thing has a very good uh, rifle stop. Uh, I think you want that in pretty much any front rest. You want to be able to push your rifle back to the same spot every time. This one has worked well for me. It is adjustable. It's, you can go up and down with it, and it's got a little set nut on it. And there is a little bit of adjustment, I think, uh, if I remember right, there's a little bit of adjustment in and out on that. This knob over here on the uh, left side from the shooter's point of view, that moves your whole top left and right. I'm going to turn it a little bit there and see if you can see this thing move. I don't know if you can see it. It's a pretty fine movement. Um, yeah, is it as good as I said? No, but you know, for what you pay for this Caldwell Rock BR, it's it's pretty good. Um, 
this knob back here, uh, let's turn that a little bit. This knob back here, that's a tension knob for your entire base assembly. Uh, you can tighten that up. You can do some course adjustment on height with that. So you snug that down and you can get about, uh, I don't know, about another inch and a half of adjustment and height out of it. And then this knob over here is for your thread. You really don't want to be down that far on it. Um, so let's start right there. So you've got, uh, you've got quite a bit of course adjustment in the height on this thing. Uh, and then of course the Mariner's wheel right there. You've got to have this down a little bit to have the Mariner's wheel do anything. And you'll notice with this knob snug, you've got no left or right movement in the, uh, in the rest. You've got to loosen that up to be able to swivel the top left and right. Um, that's the only, only way you can get left and right movement in it. Um, while, we're, while we're talking about these, let's take this apart real quick. So you can see that's the uh, base that it sits down in that big hole with. And it's got a ball bearing unit on the top of it for this whole uh, Mariner wheel to sit on and that assembly. And you'll notice that there is a groove right here. I think you can see that. That is for that is for this handle to turn into. So you get that into the groove like that, and that will not the threaded portion will not turn. So if you've got this down in there, so you can still turn it, so you can still turn it that way. And you need to have this uh, tension adjustment down in that groove. If you want to pick this thing up by the top and transport it, you get both of these tight, tighten those up, that I can pick the whole thing up and go down the road with it. The whole unit with the Caldwell uh, supplied bag on it weighs, let's see, it weighs 12.6 pounds. Not super heavy, but it's heavy enough to get the job done. Let's take a look at the feet real quick. So it's got a little tension knob right there. And screw these in. Yeah, I've got to back that off a little bit for you. And screw these in. Nice pointed tips. You can drive that into the ground. Um, not so great when you're on a bench, and it doesn't have any kind of bench feet as a as an aftermarket for it that I know of. So you can see that I use it on this stall mat. And on this stall mat. If you guys can see that right there, I have put, I have drilled partial holes right there for, for that to set right down in those holes. Let me, back that off just a little bit. So I've drilled, so I've drilled partial holes down in there for these little spikes to set down into onto this piece of horse stall mat. Now that piece of horse stall mat, that's pretty heavy stuff. If any of you folks have ever worked with that, that's how I set it up when I'm at the range. I'm doing stuff on the bench. The combined weight of the rest and the stall mat is a little bit over 20 pounds. So <laughs> the recoil of the rifle, it doesn't move the rest at all. It doesn't slide around on the concrete bench or if you guys are using a wooden bench. So let's get this set up the way we would actually use it. We'll get the ball bearing set back in there. Put that back on. We are in the grooves on that. I can still turn it when I'm in the grooves because of this one over here. I haven't snugged down this aluminum base yet. 
So again, if I snug that down, then you can't turn it. I'll back it off just a little bit. Now I can turn it. And let's adjust this height. So I'll loosen that up, let that slide all the way down. Like I said earlier, you can use that for a course adjustment. And then if you need more, you can crank it up with, take a little tension off that, you can crank it up with this Mariner wheel. And of course, it's only going to go back down to where you had your course adjustment set. So back that all the way off, then we can get it to go. all the way down and let's let's see what the height the uh, height adjustment of this is in total so we got go to the bottom of the horse stall mat we've got about five and a half inches to the bottom and that's not uh, with a front bag in there so let's see how high can we go with it And all the way up, we have got, um, looks like about seven and three quarter. So, gives you about uh, two and a half inches of adjustment. That's quite a bit. So, let's talk about price real quick. Caldwell Rock BR, as designed and as shipped with the uh, Caldwell bag. Uh, I looked at it yesterday on Midway. It was $199.99. They had it on sale for $169. Uh, direct from Caldwell, it was one ninety nine ninety nine. Uh, Amazon had it for one fifty nine ninety nine. Now, when I got mine about a year ago, Amazon had these on sale for it was around one hundred and fourteen dollars. I had like I don't know sixty sixty four dollars on a gift card, but I know ultimately, including tax, I paid sixty dollars for this. So, yeah, that was a bargain. Uh, but like I said, I never used this thing as designed. I'm going to show you now how I turned it into the Frankenstein rest and what all that entailed. So before we go to the uh, Frankenstein rest, I've got to take this thing apart a little bit anyway. So I'm going to show you uh, what. So I'm going to show you what's entailed in that. There is a little Allen screw down in here, and I'm off the center of it because I'm off the center of it because I had that uh, moved over, showing you guys how that moved left and right. And it is a 5 30 seconds Allen screw. And we're just going to pull that out. And that will lift right off of this threaded piece. Now, actually, I don't need this threaded piece. I'm going to go ahead and take it out because the part of the Frankenstein rest that I'm going to show you, it already has a uh, threaded bar on it. But I have to get the Mariner wheel off because we still want the Mariner wheel to make some elevation adjustments. We'll leave the ball bearing uh, plate on there. And this is the, and this is what we're gonna put back on it. Oh, one thing, one thing I didn't cover, the threaded portion on the Caldwell Rock BR, as it comes, it had a little nylon sleeve in here because if you guys noticed there was a little bit of play back and forth on that top but that nylon sleeve will take that play out and it will allow it to ride up and down on this threaded portion i took that sleeve out to put it into the frankenstein top well let's quit calling it frankenstein this is actually a shade tree engineering uh, coaxial top uh, but anyway i took that little nylon slide out to put it in here and the channel that is cut in here is just a little bit different size. And I, I kind of boogered the thing up, uh, getting it to try to fit in there. And, you know, now it's no good. Caldwell does send you an extra one with it, but I really haven't found a drastic need for it. So anyway, let's put this thing together. So I got the ball bearing top back on it. 
we'll, we'll get the mariner wheel started on the here get that going and one thing you'll probably notice right away is you don't get quite as much height with the coaxial top from uh, shade tree engineering as you do with the stock unit from um, Caldwell. Could I change them out? I probably could. Um, but honestly, I don't want to dick around with uh, any of this stuff right here. Uh, it's been engineered pretty well, and I don't want to mess it up. I've found that I've got plenty of height adjustment right here. I think he says you've got, let's see. Yeah, he says that you've got 20 inches of travel uh, actually 20 inches of travel with just this portion of it at 100 yards. It's more than I've ever needed. I mean, I've shot this thing a lot at 100 yards doing uh, rifle testing, and I've shot, uh, I think I've shot three, two or three matches with it at 1,000 yards and worked really good. So let's finish putting this back together. So we've got that down in there and let's put, so let's put our protector bag back down in there. Uh, you'll notice, I think you can see it hopefully here. I think you can see it here. This has got a channel down in it and the bag will set right down in that channel. It's nice and snug. It's a little bit different way of securing the front bag in it than Caldwell had, but the little tension knobs here for your bag, they are pretty much they are pretty much engineered the same way in that all they do is push pressure in by you know tilting these bag holders in from the side. Um, one thing I did not like about the uh, Shade Tree Engineering front rest, it did not have a bubble level on it. I glued one on right there. Of course, for me, with my rifle, I can't shoot it when it's level anyway. It's got to be, it's got to be cocked. It's got to be cockeyed a little bit. So, bubble level is not hugely important for, for me. I want to get this thing set up pretty good. My uh, Marine Corps buddy, David, we shoot uh, service rifle together. And uh, he's using this right now while he's waiting on his Seb. Actually, this front stop, he can't use it because the way his rifle is set up. He can't get it high enough to bump into that. His rifle's riding up over it. And it's creating a problem. So he's been shooting it <clears throat> with that off. And that doesn't give you a huge amount of adjustment. Um, I think this would be a little bit better unit if the guy at uh, Shade Tree Engineering had made this piece where it's got a longer threaded portion on it. Um, probably have about... I don't know, about three quarters of an inch adjustment on this. One would think that that's enough for most any rifle, but obviously it's not if David can't shoot it on his. I'll snug that back down. So let's do like a little 360 view around this thing. So you can get a view of it as a Frankenstein rest. Now, back here is the coaxial portion. That gives a lot of movement right there. It's more than I've ever needed. You can see how much up and down movement is in that. I'm gonna say that's roughly, I'll say there's roughly three quarters of an inch to an inch in that. That's a lot, that's at least 10 inches at uh, 1,000 yards. I think it's a lot more. Uh, and it's probably, got a, it's probably got about an equal amount on the left and right adjustment. It's more than I've ever needed. It's got tension adjust screws right here for how much uh, pressure it takes to move it left and right, up and down. Uh, this one's set pretty, pretty light because once your rifle is in it, you know, you still want that balanced feel to it. One thing I did not like about the Shade Tree Top when I got it, it came with this knob right here. You can see a size comparison 
and you can see how that fits in my fingers. I just, I didn't love the feel of that. It's not a bad knob, but I did not love the feel of it. I had shot uh, some other folks' Seb rests, and there's, Seb uses like, and Seb uses like a golf ball size um, handle on his. That is an actual golf ball. I drilled it and threaded it to uh, quarter 20, and you can see it's a little bit bigger than that, but, um, but I thought, okay, that's a little bit redneck uh, having an actual golf ball in there. And the threads don't hold all that great anyway. So I ordered that ball handle uh, with a quarter 20 thread in it. And this ball handle with a quarter 20 thread in it from uh, McMaster Car. There's two diff these are two different types. This is a little bit harder material and a little slicker. This one is, I can't remember what they call it, but it's got a little bit of give to it. Um, and I've played around with both of them. I like the one like this that's more rigid. And that one just that one just fits my hand really good. I love that. So the Shade Tree Engineering, I think, let's see, that addition to it was $395. So $395 with about $60 for a bag. Uh, that brings me to what, uh, four, four fifty-five, and the sixty dollars I paid for the rest. Uh, so I'm what five, five hundred and fifteen dollars. Uh, that's a little bit of money, but you know you can get all this whole setup in about yeah, probably two weeks, uh, maybe a little quicker, and that's a lot better than waiting on a Seb, you know, for six months to a year and a half. Not as good as a Seb, but man. If you guys aren't serious about F-Class or if you want just a really good setup to take to the range, do some bench rest type testing, uh, this is a hard setup to beat. Um, let's talk a little bit more about the uh, Shade Tree Engineering rest. You can get different uh, threads for it. The one for the Caldwell Rock BR, it's a 7 8 They call it an Acme post and uh, it, it made it up perfectly. They also have one that's a three quarter uh, 10 on the threading and a one inch. They have two one inch. They have a one, one to 12 and a one to 14. So it'll fit just about any other uh, bench rest base out there um, if you so desire to put it on something else. But the coaxial top, man, that is the way to go for F class. If I didn't say it before, the Caldwell Rock BR as shipped weighs 12.6 pounds. With the Shade Tree Engineering top on it and set up like this, it weighed, uh, oh, what was it? It was like 15.6, uh, 16 pounds, somewhere right in there. And the bulk of that, I think, is made up in this uh, protector front bag. That's got heavy sand in it. That thing's pretty substantial. Uh, I think, honestly, the uh, difference, if, if I weighed the tops, I think the, the difference in the tops without the bag, uh, the Caldwell actually came out a little bit heavier because... This thing's built with cast iron. Uh, it's lightweight cast iron, but this is all aluminum. So and that Caldwell is probably about half a pound heavier. Um, but this thing, you know, like I said, it's, I don't know, it's a good 16 pounds, uh, 15 and a half, 16 pounds. So that's the Frankenstein rest. And, you know, if you guys are looking for a, a cheaper alternative, but a very practical alternative to a, a Seb or you know, any of the other type uh, coaxial rests, or you're waiting on one, I would highly advise making your own Frankenstein rest with that uh, Shade Tree Engineering top. That guy, he was onto something when he uh, designed this to uh, be able to accommodate into a lot of different uh, front rests. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share the video. And uh, if you got any questions, leave them down here in the comments below. Uh, I love comments and, uh, you know, if you have a setup similar to this or a Caldwell Rock BR, what's your experience with it? You know, post it in the comments. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Remember kids, X's win matches. Keep the greasy side down. Y'all have a good one.